Hey guys, what's up? I'm Captain Mike and welcome back to Florida Sport Fishing TV Plus. Today's topic, offshore permit fishing. It's that time of the year. I've been doing a lot of it lately. We just filmed an episode of Florida Sport Fishing TV. It's fresh on my mind and a lot of really cool details I want to share with you so you can get in on this really exciting fishery as well. The permit extraordinary predator can thrive in one foot of water or well over a hundred feet of water often associated with flats fishing backcountry fishing guys that are fly fishing for permit which is just an epic fishery right there um, but this time of the year april may june big numbers of 10 to 30 pound permits some even exceeding 40 pounds will gather in large schools offshore the keys here on the ocean side on the local reefs and wrecks to spawn not all of the spots hold fish i'm going to tell you that right now but some of them are just loaded in these big permit and i'll tell you by just doing some homework you know networking with your local you know charter boat captains fishing forums fishing clubs your local tackle shops you can get zeroed in on these particular spots couple of clues for you 90 to 110 feet that's it right there so just really look for artificial reefs and wrecks in that depth along the atlantic side key largo to key west and you shouldn't have too hard of a time you know getting zeroed in on these big permit now to be successful it's not all that complicated but you've got to do it right like all other fisheries it's all about the details first is getting out there to the spot okay knowing the perimeter there getting out there to the spot don't start fishing just pay attention to what's going on or maybe you know some other boats already fishing that area that's okay no one is typically anchoring everybody is drifting for these permits so they'll start up current they'll drift across the structure you get 100 200 yards past it and you come all the way back around and you get in line and you follow that rotation so as long as all of those boats are doing that you shouldn't have a problem getting in line and being successful if you're the only guy there consider yourself lucky if there's somebody there who is anchored and chumming for snappers because these reefs and wrecks will hold other fish as well you know that's okay i mean nobody owns the ocean we all have a right to it but just exercise a level of courtesy like i said don't go through anybody's chump slick just go around and you know everybody should be one big fat happy family nevertheless once you're there and you've determined what direction and what speed you're going to drift in get up current we'll say 50 to 100 yards okay because these big schools are permit they'll roam around the structure it's not like a grouper that's real real tight to it on the other hand like i said they'll roam all around it so it's really just a matter of being at the right place at the right time and crossing paths with the body of fish keep in mind the sport fish boats the guys with towers they have an advantage in this fishery because they could often see the permit schooling up near the surface especially when that sun is high up in the sky however a guy with a 39 foot center console like me and i don't have a tower i'm not really looking for them i'm just setting myself up for that drift okay and getting into the proper position from there it's of course about bait and there's only one bait if you're serious about catching these big permit one option crabs small little silver dollar size crabs past crabs blue crabs they'll both work just a small little permit crabs no claws you don't want the claws on the crabs they're easier to handle easier for the permit to eat okay and you're going to impale that crab on a jig head three quarter to one ounce jig head just like that right there there it is okay just the three quarter or one ounce jig head white pink or bright you know yellow the chartreuse color all work well what's really important is the size of that jig i can't stress it enough not only for the weight to keep that crab on or near the bottom but the size of the hook and the strength of the hook is real important once you get below that three quarter ounce size and you're down to the half ounce that hook size 
gets smaller, dramatically smaller, and continues to get smaller as the jig head gets lighter. So make sure that you stick with three quarter or one ounce jig heads. All three of the colors will work. I've caught fish on all of them, okay? So they'll all work. You want to impale that crab right on the corner of the shell from the bottom up. Just slowly drill that tip of that hook through the shell. You don't want to break the shell off. You don't want to kill the crab. So right on the corner of that shell of the carapace, just go right through, dangle the crab right on the jig head. From there, you know, I prefer spinning tackle. We're always fishing conventional gear. When we're grouper fishing on the reef, when we're fishing for muttons out on the wrecks, uh, certainly when we're trolling, it's all about conventional gear, right? Well, for this fishery, I really like spinning tackle. A lot, a lot of fun, and it's really all that you need. Typical outfit, seven foot chaos rod rated for 15 to 30 pound class. Real versatile outfit. We use it for everything from snook to sail fishing, and it makes an ideal permit stick as well. Matched to a Shimano Saragossa 10,000. Okay, just an absolute workhorse of a spinning reel. Smooth drag, a lot of line capacity, powerful. Those are real important features for this fishery. It's loaded with 30 pound diamond braid. You don't wanna go lighter than 30 pound, okay? I'm telling you, and I'll explain why in a moment. 30 pound diamond braid tied to 25 feet of 30 or 40 pound diamond presentation fluorocarbon. Use a small little Alberto knot to tie the braid to the leader material. So it's very streamlined, very small. There's no additional terminal tackle. There are no swivels, there are no egg sinkers, just that very small bulletproof connection from the braid to the leader. At the end of that leader, like I said, is a three quarter or one ounce jig head. You can tie it on with a fisherman's knot. You can tie it on with a small loop knot. Both of them will be perfectly fine. That's the whole rig right there. Nothing else. If you want to get in on this permit bite, do it the right way. I'm telling you, don't, you know, don't get all fancy schmancy with fish finder rigs and egg sinkers. Yeah, there's a time when the water is crystal clear and there's no current and you're sitting still and you're not moving where you might want to just scale down to a VMC circle hook, maybe one little split shot. But for the vast majority of the time, the jig heads are the way to go. Once you get set up, up current of the spot, flip out a rod. I like to fish multiple rods. One of them, I let the jig hit the bottom. Okay, I'll feed out another 100 feet of line or so, rod will go right in the rod holder. And we may set up three or four rods up and down the gunnel just like that. You could either fish them out of the rod holders at different levels in the water column, you could put it under your arm and slowly feed out that bait, whichever you prefer, both really effective. But don't be afraid to let Rodney the rod holder do all of the work, okay? And I want you to imagine what's happening. That crab is on that jig head. It's on the bottom, okay? That's the goal. It's on or near the bottom. As the boat is drifting down current, that crab is hopping. It's hopping along with the current. Looks really, really natural. And I'll tell you, when the permit are turned on, they just can't resist it. But understand, they're not always in that green zone. They're not always eating. You may see them. You may read them on the machine in a big blob right on your fish finder. Um, you may even visually see schools in the water. That doesn't mean that they're going to be eating. They turn on and off like a light switch. Once you do get a fish on, and trust me, there's no doubt when a big permit sucks down your crab. Rod's going to bend double over. Line's just going to come screaming off the reel. Okay. At that point, you really got to put it to them because permit are notorious for getting back into the bottom and for rubbing their faces in the bottom literally to dislodge whatever is in their mouth. You know, they're thinking it's a, a, a bone, a, who knows, a shell. Obviously, they're not thinking it's a jig head, but nevertheless, instinctively, they're going to be rubbing their faces in the bottom and they'll burn you off. It's happened to us multiple times and it'll happen to you too if you spend enough time permit fishing. So make sure that you really apply the heat. You want to fight these fish quickly. They're spawning. Okay, so of course you don't want the fish to be in the water hook too long. You don't want it to get eaten by a shark, which typically isn't a huge problem on the shallow reefs on those 100 foot spots, you know, around 100 feet. We may see a shark here and there, but nowhere near as bad as on the deeper mutton wrecks. Nevertheless, fight them, enjoy the fight. 
keep your hands wet. This fishery is closed, okay? So for April, May, June, July, you cannot harvest any permit. So it's all about the sport here and releasing that fish unharmed. But it's worth it, I promise you, because these are amazing game fish. They fight incredibly hard, blistering runs, digging back toward the bottom, and you're gonna really be surprised how a 10 to 15, 20 pound fish has that much power, okay? You really will be surprised. Remember what I said about the 30 pound braid not going any lighter, that's exactly the reason. If you go lighter, you gotta fish a little bit of a lighter drag, the fish has a better chance of digging you into the bottom and burning you off. So I like to stick with that 30. The 25 foot leader does two things. Number one, it's very stealthy. Okay, very stealthy, they can't see that fluorocarbon and permit have amazing eyesight, amazing. Number two, I'm periodically checking my leader, even not only even between fish, but just by fishing a crab on this jig head and it rubbing across the bottom, there's a lot of structure, a lot of sea fans, coral, all sorts of stuff down there, um, especially if it's an artificial reef site or could be steel and concrete, very sharp, and it will fray your leader right by the jig. So anytime, you know, literally every time I reel this up, I'm feeling that leader and I'm constantly cutting the foot off and retying it. I could do that a whole bunch of times without needing an entirely new top shot. So that long leader serves a couple of different purposes. Some of the bycatch you're gonna catch, well, really on the crab, there's one main bycatch, mutton snapper. Big muttons love crabs as well. So don't be surprised when a 30 inch mutton sucks down that little crab, okay? That's gonna be the bycatch. Hogfish, we've caught hogfish on the crabs. Um, certainly a grouper is not out of the question because of course all of those bottom fish love crabs, but this is all about the permit fishery. Like I said, this is a special time of the year. It's a magical time of the year when we can go out there and do this. And the fish have moved in. They're on the reefs now. Like I said, I've just been out there, spent the last three days permit fishing, and all three days I've had success. So they're there and it's just gonna continue to pick up and gain momentum as this spring season continues. If you've never permit fished before, now is the time to do it. And I promise you, you're not gonna be sorry because this is one fish that is just an absolute trophy.